Hey everyone, welcome back. So in today's episode, I want to quickly walk you guys to an uh, app that I have been developing uh, for the past weeks. I thought it's interesting because it simulates the stock return of the momentum strategy. So momentum strategy is a quite famous strategy that it builds upon the Fama French three-factor model. Uh, so for those of you who have not heard of that, that is factorized trading or algorithmic based trading. Uh, it falls under the field of asset pricing, uh, which is originally led by Fama French. And they are the big guys in the field. They won the Nobel Prize. And I can do a whole nother video just on that, right? But without further ado, let's dive into what this app is doing. So this is what the user interface look like. That is the URL of the app uh, I hosted on Hugging Face. Of course, I'm gonna drop a link on the bottom of the video. So right off the bat, you see the usage instruction menu. And then down here, there's a reference. Now I try to keep this reference uh, succinct as well as technical. Now the reason I do that is because this actually comes from a technical paper. Uh, the Carhartt, that's the author of the paper, and that's the link right there. For those of you who are, have academic background, feel free to check it out. Now here's the thing I want to say about this paper. This is not some groundbreaking research, right? It's not like this paper came out last year or something like that. We're talking about a paper that's coming out in 1997, so it's been a while. Now, here's the thing. Typically, what people tell you or when you learn from school is signals like this will go away pretty fast, right? You have a paper coming out in 1997. This paper has been on the market for a while. Anyone can just read the paper and replicate the strategy, right? And then if everyone starts doing that, the strategy or the signal will go away. Uh, so that's kind of like the idea and rationale behind why this is no longer the hot thing in the market right now. But based on my personal experience, this is actually still making me money, uh, which I thought is interesting to share and to build this app for you guys to demonstrate what that part means for me as a small buyer in the market, right? So the premise here is Jiangdo, right? Any Jiangdo in the market, individual trader, I'm not talking about systemic trader, I'm not talking about institutional trader, right? Just anybody with a personal account. So with that being said, that's the paper. And what the model is doing is it's building upon the three-factor model. Uh, so this formula here that you guys see here, uh, this is the three-factor model. So what the three-factor model is saying is, well, there are three factors, right? The first is the market factor that's here, MKT. Second one is high minus low. HML, that means high minus low. That is talking about the value versus growth. So essentially, we're looking at, are you the value stock or are you the growth stock? So we're looking at the market cap over your book value, right? If your market cap over your book value is large, that means you're more like a growth stock. Reversely, you're more like a value stock, right? Because you have lots of money on your book, but the market valuation is not that high. So those trading strategies are created just like that, right? You pick a metric, whatever metric you want to pick, market cap, whatever ratio you want to pick, whatever financial accounting indicator you want to pick, sort it, and then create a portfolio arbitrage. Buy the top quintile, short sell the bottom quintile, things like that. And the third one is small minus big. The small minus big is easy to understand. It's the market cap. And a portfolio arbitrage opportunity can be created by looking at the market cap, right? For example, you buy the top quintile of the market cap, and then you short sell the bottom quintile of the market cap stocks. Uh, so the Carhartt four-factor model, which is also the momentum strategy, uh, come from the same philosophy, right? So we're all under the algorithmic trading philosophy or all under the asset pricing philosophy. That's the domain that we're in right now. And this up minus down just simply talk about the growth rate, the stock return. You pick a window, right? Every month, let's say we balance our portfolio once, and then we look at the entire stock universe whatever stocks we have, we compute the stock return, and then we sort it from highest to the lowest. And then out of the stocks in this entire stock pool, you long the portfolio on top quintile, and then you short the portfolio on the bottom quintile, and then you create a portfolio arbitrage. So in this app, what I did was just the upper part. And I kind of just want to show you what that performance looked like purely based off simulation. So. With that being said, let's go to the left hand side, click on English. Uh, there's a Chinese version, which is for friends and family in China. But for the sake of this video, we're going to use English as a default language. So the app starts off with the interface like this. On the left hand side, there's an expand collapse to explain what the app is doing. 
And then there are a couple of metrics. There's a start date, end date, there's a time frame, there's a top end stocks, and then the height of the plot. Height of the plot is purely visualization. There's nothing to do with the strategy. So that's just right there. You can choose however you want to look at the plot. The start date and end date is completely controlled by user. Start date is default as first day of 2001. Now, of course, you can pick another day, but that's not always going to be guaranteed because there could be stocks entered in this list that may or may not be publicly traded in that year that you entered as a start date. And if that happens, it will cut the data frame by the stock that went public the last. Okay. So if you have a pool of stocks, some went public 2001, some went public 2005, you will cut the data by 2005 because we need all the data available to run the strategy, right? So that's just a premise that I have to make uh, to make this algorithm work. And then the end date is soft coded to be always today. If you run the app tomorrow, the date will be updated. And within the app, whatever this ticker that you entered, the app will automatically download live data using Yahoo Finance as a source. And then it will always be refreshed up to the most recent trading day. Like for example, today I'm recording this video is a good Friday, then there's no trading. So if I'm running the strategy today and I hit this button today, the data will be fresh up to yesterday. So that's another premise right there for you guys to be aware of. And then on top of that, you can create a time frame, right? You can run the strategy once a month, or you can choose a button down here that's once three months, or also known as quarterly. But if you go too large of a time frame uh, based on some of these stocks that are new stocks, you probably run the strategy a couple of times, which you may not see the impact. So the default is one month versus three months. And the last metric that you can choose is the number of stocks. Because I have a bunch of stocks here, and you can actually enter however you want. So if you enter 50 tickers here, now obviously you're not gonna look at the entire 50 stocks as a portfolio that defeats the purpose. You're just gonna pick the top N stocks that you prefer, whatever that N is. The default is three, you could be five, six, seven, eight, whatever you want. Now, of course, the higher that number is, the closer you are to the market. And then here, when I say market, I'm talking about the average return of whatever the stock pool that you entered not the S&P 500. So what we're trying to present here is given a pool of stocks, whatever they are, can you build a strategy to be the average return of that pool of stocks? So that is a benchmark. That's what we're going to do today. So very simple. You just need to click this button, run analysis, and then the algorithm will run in the back end, and then it will present you a plot. And once it presents you a plot, you will see a couple of things. On the top left corner, you will see performance, you will see benchmark shop ratio, you will see portfolio shop ratio. Now, of course, people might say these numbers are too small, right? Here is a more realistic understanding of how big or small these numbers are. So I have here right out the actual numbers, not just the ratio, right? There's a mean standard deviation for the benchmark, there's a mean standard deviation for the portfolio. And then here, for example, the portfolio here says 0.0339. That refers to 3.39% of the expected return of whatever strategy that we're running here. And that may look like a small number on paper, but here's the math that we can quickly run through. So let's do some math, right? Given $1,000 and you're producing 3%, right? 3.39%. So one plus 0.0339. And let's say the strategy runs a year and every year there's 12 months. So to the power of 12, that will turn a thousand dollars into fourteen ninety two. That's almost fifteen hundred dollars, or in other words, a fifty percent return on that year. That is not a small number, okay. And if you run this strategy for fifty years, you will turn one thousand dollars into whatever this number is. I can't even count, right? That's a thousand. That's million. That's four hundred ninety nine billion dollars. So now that's the question right here, right? Are you able to run the strategy for 50 years? Well, I have not seen evidence like that before, right? Warren Buffett is considered probably the best guy in value investing, doing things long term, and Berkshire Hathaway's return is, of course, online. You guys can look it up. And, and I don't even think Berkshire Hathaway is producing this kind of return, which makes this number a crazy large number that is so large that's almost unbelievable. But are you able to pull out in the short run 
Well, in the short run, we have a couple of AI boom, right? If you hold on the Nvidia stock like I did, you're probably doing pretty well. And then there are other tech stocks that you can hold on to, right? Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Google, you name it. So in other words, if you're just looking at one year, two year time frame, and then you cook up whatever strategy that it is you're using, even if you're not cheating, you probably still pull out a pretty decent return on paper. So that's what this app is trying to tell you. And that's the story that this app is trying to convey. So that's the message here. On top of that, of course, there are a couple of plots. There's this darker blue plot that is the performance for portfolio. And there's lighter blue down here. That is the benchmark. Benchmark is, like I said before, the average return of all of the stocks ticker that you entered. So with that being said, uh, you can kind of see and gauge the performance from, I'm looking at April 2013 right now. That is the left hand side of this plot all the way to today, uh, 2024. Uh, February, March, and as you can see, uh, with $1 starting from the beginning, and if you trade the strategy all the way to right now, from 2012, 2013, you will turn $1 into $50 using the strategy, and then you would have turned, and even though benchmark only went from $1 to perhaps $9, which is still not that bad. And I also be mindful that these stocks, it's already filtered by myself, right? I went on S&P 500, sorted by market cap, and then within that market cap, I picked the stocks that I like. Of course, there's bias, right? The bias is whatever it is I see in these stocks. I like them based on whatever reason it is, and that's why I enter these stocks here. So in other words, uh, one message here I wanna share with you guys is whatever performance that this plot is showing you, is not purely based on the strategy itself. It's based on top of whatever performance that I'm picking from S&P 500, which is this list of stocks that I entered all the way in the beginning of this app, which is a premise introduced in the app, which gives bias. So with that being said, hopefully you enjoyed the discussion here. I'm not saying that this is the best strategy for everyone. I'm saying that this is a strategy that is interesting, that evidence shown that the signal has not yet completely gone away. And then last but not least, you can of course play around with the top end stocks. You can increase this number to five, six, seven, eight, whatever you want. You can run the analysis again, and then you can see what the performance is like and see if you're agreeing with the shock ratio agreeing with the expected return and volatility and so on and so forth. Now in this case, the expected return of the portfolio is about 2%, standard deviation is about 6%. So it's a little bit smaller than previous one because this time you're holding six stocks. You're holding more stocks, that means you're a little bit more diversified comparing with the previous time. And then this simulation, uh, since you're producing 2%, you rolled out $1,000 on 2% for 12 months into the future, then you're turning $1,000 into $1,300, something like that. So that's what that 2% means on a monthly time frame. Now, of course, you can change this time frame to three months, right? If you change time to three months, it's not gonna be times 12, it's gonna be times four, things like that. So one last thing I wanna show you is, of course, I'm gonna give you guys all these data, right? There's a list of this data, it's all recorded in the CSV. You can click on a CSV, it will download a CSV named history underscore that day's date. And then once you save to your desktop, you can open the CSV. So you're gonna see a CSV like this. It's essentially an Excel spreadsheet uh, with date column, that's the first column, the rolling benchmark starting from $1, and then the rolling portfolio return starting from a dollar as well. And then you just subtract one, you can figure out the return. And of course, this is monthly, right? Monthly means every data point, every row on the Excel spreadsheet is a month. So for example, this benchmark here, 1.05, that means 5% return, right? That 5% return is the March of 2013. For all those stocks entered in the ticker in the beginning of the app, and that's what that's representing. And then you do your, you, and then you trade your strategy, right? Compute the growth rate, sort it, pick the top six stocks or whatever, and stocks that you like, and then hold that portfolio, you make 11%. And then 
it tells you what those stocks are, right? MU, MGen, Now, Adobe, Abby, Tesla. So the last column is obviously the key. The spreadsheet tells you what these stocks are and what you should buy. Now, of course, you can fast forward to the bottom, and that is the February, right? That is the February of this year, 2024, and the algorithm suggests you to buy NVIDIA, Meta, AMAT, Eli Lilly, Disney, and AMD. So those are six stocks that you should be holding according to this strategy if you wanna have this kind of performance. So now, with that being said, all jokes aside, this is a purely academic discussion, right? I'm not saying you guys have to all put your hard-earned savings into these six stocks, right? That's not the purpose of this video. But the message here is essentially an academic discussion to show you here's how I think about stock market as a whole, and here's what I believe something interesting and something consistent. So with that being said, hope you liked today's video. If you do, give a like and hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.